What's going on everybody? It's your boy DJ Mako here, ready to give you guys another LMS tutorial. I know this has been one of those videos, honestly I should have made a long time ago. You guys really liked the last one I made, and honestly I think we can do better this time. In this video I'm going to go over 10 LMS hacks to help you start making better music productions. Now before we get started, full disclosure, I actually have switched over to Ableton Live 10. I know it sucks for some of you guys who are following me and like, hey, what happened? You had one LMS tutorial video that a lot of people liked and all of a sudden you switched over. And if I'm gonna be straightforward with you guys, there is a lot of things that are lacking in LMS, but I still think it is very important because it is a free DAW and which means people should try it. However, it is hard to get started. So that's why I'm gonna be here, hopefully being able to shed a little more insight because I've switched over to a DAW that has better tools and hopefully can show you how some of those tools can be used in LMS or at least get to the point where we're getting similar results. All right, so let's jump right into the video. All right, everybody, let's jump right into this. Okay, so the first tip that I have is copying a pattern quickly and easily. So what do I mean by that? So I'm bringing up a project I have I'm using right now called LMS Tutorial One Music. Original, I know. Oh, we're gonna click on an instrument and you can see here that I have a repeating pattern, okay? So this is what it sounds like. Something quick I just threw together. So it's really annoying to have to go click and go make your patterns individually. Fortunately, there is a way to make this a lot easier. So let's delete all this. And what you wanna do, if we wanted to recreate this pattern here, multiple times across, all you need to do is select it all by hitting either this box up here and dragging, or there's a simpler way to do it. Hold down control, select what you want, and it's all blue. So now what you can do is control C and go up to the top here, drag the marker where you want to paste, hit control V, Boom. and then we just keep going with it. Easy peasy. On to the next tip. Next tip is Add some reverb, EQ, dual filter, and echo, okay? So, to add an effect, you go click on the instrument, go to effects, add effect, and we're gonna type in reverb. You're gonna grab the C plate two by two. That's my favorite reverb, it's the simplest one to use. This one is what it sounds like. So this reverb is really simple and the reason I like it is you hit the controls here, the bandwidth tells you how much wetness it's going to have. So the less bandwidth, there's gonna be very little reverb added to it. But if you drag it all the way, it's gonna be super wide and fill your space. Now usually you don't want that for a lot of things. I like to pick in the middle somewhere and then you adjust the tail. So a really short tail means the reverb's gonna cut off really quickly, but if you drag the tail all the way to the end, it's gonna be huge and last forever, which is also really messy, so I wouldn't necessarily recommend that all the time. But you can set the blend. The higher the blend is, the more it, the reverb-y sound blends in. So if we set the blend really high, this is what it sounds like. But let's turn the blend down just to add a little bit, and then we can change the dampening the higher the dampening is, the shorter it cuts off. It's hard to explain, but just test it out and you'll kind of see how it is. So, you hear that little tail off. That's one effect I like to do. Then I also like to use the EQ, two by two. Then we'll also add, potentially, a dual filter. Now what's the dual filter? It's essentially the filter knob that you can find on certain instruments, but it's two of them. And sometimes you don't need the dual part of dual filter. So you can turn the mix all the way to the left, change this frequency, so now you can... This is a really good plugin to throw on things that you wanna automate. This is similar to a low pass filter, it has a high pass filter built into it, 
and a bunch of other things. This is one of the essential plugins to use. And these three right here are pretty important. You can also add my favorite, which is the CAF Vintage Delay Ladspa plugin. This one is very simple to use. You pick your tempo, so 155, and then you just change how you want it subdivided and the amount, and voila, you have some echo. All right, on to the next tip. If you want to move large chunks of track, what you can do is you grab the square up here, drag it over whatever part of the track you want to copy, and then hold down control, drag, and place. Easy, so we just completely duplicated this region here. Simple, easy, on to the next one. Pitch bending notes. Now this one is not always possible in certain instruments. So what we're gonna have to do is demonstrate on one that is, and the triple oscillator is the easiest one to pitch bend with. So let's just make a quick, simple synth here. Bam, it's just a square. So I've got our pattern open in the piano roll. Let's just make sure we're still recording. Got our pattern open in the piano roll. So we've got this little bass line here. So to pitch bend one of these, you go up here, this little polygon tool, click on it, click the thing that you want, or the note that you want to pitch bend, and then you can play with this and pitch bend it. And you can see in the window here that it's actually showing you exactly where it's pitch bending. So it does take a little bit of trial and effort to find where in timing wise that this is gonna pitch bend, but this is what, it, what happens to it. You can use this with samples. You can use this with Bit Invader, Freeboy, I believe. I don't think you can use it with LB302 and you can definitely use it with triple oscillator. You can't use it in Zenad sub effects, but if you want to do pitch bending stuff, there is another way with instruments like Zenad sub effects. So you click on it, you open it up, you can change the range here to 24, I would recommend, which means it's just 24 notes essentially. So 24 is two octaves. So what you can do is, let's just create another simple thing here. Let's click on it. So you see here the pattern didn't change pitch, but what you can do is click a new automation track down here, click on the instrument, control, drag the pitch knob here, double click it, and now you can drag and drop the pitch this way. So see, we just made a pitch bend on an unpitch bendable instrument. Perfect, boom, let's go. All right, I know that I brought up Zenad sub effects. Personally, my favorite synth to use. Now you might be wondering how to use it. And it's simpler than it seems. You click it, show GUI, edit instrument, edit, show voice parameters, and you finally can change the waveform here. So hit change, and now you have a waveform right in front of you. You can pick sine, triangle, pulse, which is basically a square. Eventually, after some tweaking, what you can do is you can produce a sound like this. Cool, on to the next step. 30 second notes and 64 second notes. Now this one took me a while to figure out, and honestly, it's a lot simpler than it seems, but it does take a second for you to find it. So we're gonna open up a new piano roll, go here, and you're gonna to go to the top where it says Q. You wanna change the Q to 30 second or 64. Now 64 makes these squares really, really small so that you have a guide. The green lines are quarter notes, but if I go back to 30 second note, bam, that's what it looks like. And then if we go back to 16th note, that's what it looks like and then you can fill it in there. And you can really get like, really fine tuned with it. Something else that's also, and this is gonna go into my next tip, number seven, which is triplets. Now, 
triplets aren't obvious in LMMS either, but there is a really easy way to do it. And if you go back up to this cue in the piano roll, you keep clicking past 30, one over 64. Actually, if you bring the drop down, that's simpler. You see one over three, one over six, one over 12, one over 24. Now this is to change up the grid so that it is triplet notes instead of 16th notes. And that means you can draw out 16th note patterns. Number eight is going to be a pro tip for making sure your notes are the right length and fitting in the grid. LMS doesn't do the greatest job formatting your notes. So it will typically be set to last note, which means it will draw the size of the last note that you dropped on. What you can do if you find that your formatting is really funky and it's cutting off at weird places is go up here, click on something like a whole note. Whenever, wherever you click, it will create a whole note and now it will properly line up on the grid instead of overlapping halfway through a square. And this is really helpful, especially when doing triplets and switching between triplets and um, 16th notes because they won't line up perfectly unless you do something like this. So now let's try and make, and then what you wanna do is switch it back to last note once you're in the right time signature with your notes. And then we're gonna use our copy and paste thing that we did a little bit ago, oops, without killing everything. We're gonna copy and pick a spot, paste, experiment for yourself and find out what is working for you. All right, so the next one, this one's super important and a lot of people I'm sure ask about this. Side chaining, how do you side chain in LMS? Well, it's very simple for the most part. You're gonna use this tool called the peak controller and I already have it set up for in this track. So you can hear, if we go to my drop. You can hear it like fading in as the drums are hitting hard. And what you do is you're gonna to go to your drums, wherever your kick drum is. So my kick drum is right here. You're going to click on your kick drum, put it in channel one, which is what I have it set for right now. In the channel editor, which is up here, you're gonna to go to the track where your drums are. So we're gonna rename this kick drum side chain. And what you wanna do is drag the peak controller effect. Uh, hit add effect, hit peak controller. Then you're gonna to go to controls and you want to set your attack really high, decay really low, set your multiplier to not super high, 2.6 is what this is set at, and then my modulation amount is brought down to there. So now what you do is whatever instrument you want sidechain, you're going to put in a different channel. So let's just create a new channel, right click the volume knob and then go to connections. So on this one, you're gonna to go to connect to controller, user controller, controller one. There's only one controller right now. You hit okay. And then what happens is every time the kick hits, this volume knob is gonna go down. So what you can do now is in each instrument, so let's go to just this one, you're going to make sure that it's in FX channel two or whatever channel that you put. And so, can adjust the parameters from there for how much you want to get in detail with it. All right, last thing for today is clean side chaining. So I know I just went over side chaining, but some of the better practices for side chaining, which I did not employ in this track, is actually finding a sample that's cleaner. Because some of these kick drum patterns, this one's pretty short here, but sometimes the kick drum that you have may be dirtier or longer or have a tail or something like that, then you want to side chain. So what you wanna do is, or pick something that's a clean side chain, so a really short kick, okay? Do the same thing I just showed you in the last step, side chain it, channel one, da da da. And what you can do is go to peak controller, 
and do mute effect. And what this does is if we go here, I'm gonna demonstrate. So it completely mutes the sidechain input, the instrument that causes the other volume knobs to go down and up, essentially so that you can have a clean thing. And what you would do is then line this up. You would line this up with your kick drum, or if you wanted to do like a, a wobbly effect, you can do it however you want. Again, experiment with all of these things. Thanks for checking out this video. Hope it was helpful. And before we go, just wanna shout out to all of you that have watched some of these previous videos. It's really meant a lot. It's really helped me stay determined with producing music and producing videos. I am planning on doing a video come talking about Ableton and my experience with it and comparing it potentially with LMS. I also am planning on releasing a couple new songs that are finished and I wanna go over those with you guys and break down how I made those. And I may potentially even come back and make a how I made this, how I would have made this in LMMS video. All right guys, thanks so much for watching this YouTube channel. We're almost to a thousand subscribers. Hopefully past that by the time you're watching this. Thanks for checking this out. See you soon. This is DJ Mako with the hair. See you later.